Uh, okay, so we're continuing with compactness. Let me remind you of what happened last lecture. So we went through some generalizations of notions of sequences of convergence from, say, R to a generic metric space. Uh, we talked about one direction in Boltzmann and Weierstrass, so that a subset of R is closed and bounded, uh, if and only if it's sequentially compact, so we'll define that. So a subset, or say a metric space, is sequentially compact if every sequence contains a convergent subsequence. And we finished by proving uh, that the image <coughs> of a sequentially compact subset under a continuous map is again sequentially compact. I began last lecture by saying that compactness was the property of a closed interval uh, which is responsible for various things, one of those things being the extreme value theorem. And what I want to do now is take this proposition uh, and use it to derive the extreme value theorem. In this generality, there's a special case that we'll have, uh, well, that is to say, to prove the generalization of the extreme value theorem. Here's okay, so suppose I have a metric space which is sequentially compact. map from that sequentially compact space uh, to just R.
if it wasn't an adherent point, right, then there would be some epsilon uh, for which the open ball of radius epsilon around lambda as a subset of R uh, did not intersect the image.
we have to have multiple spheres. Index family open sets. such that the subset that you're picking out by those indices is itself a cover. Okay, so that's a sub. It's significant that a subcover is not where I look at my open cover and I take some subset of the open sets. Right? The sub is not referring to the open sets in the cover, it's referring to the indices. Okay, so that's, that's Alright, so that's cover, subcover, we know what a finite color means. And uh, well, maybe some examples briefly. Trivial examples. Yeah. Set, which is just X itself, is a color. T is a cover, which 
take all the sets, it's a cover. It's got X, right? So it's a cover. If I take a cover and I throw in some more things, it's still a cover. Yeah. Okay. So it's not difficult to produce uh, covers. Collection of open sets uh, is cover for R. And the following collection is a sub. So I picked out some subset of indices, maybe the ones that are even. So, uh, 
me I'll state the theorem. We'll do some memo beforehand. So given the metric space, whose associated topological space is T is the topology of T sub D. Xd is sequentially compact and only if the topological space associated to it is compact. This is, this is not meant to be obvious. <coughs> okay, the two definitions seem to be talking about rather different things. Uh, but it's true. So we're going to prove it. The proof will fall fairly quickly out of the following lemma. So let xd be a sequentially compact metric space. Fix a positive real number. I claim that associated, so given a positive real number, I can find some finite list of points, the number of them may depend on epsilon, such that if I take the open walls of that fixed radius at all those points, sets as a cover of the associated topological space. Okay. <clears throat> okay, so what's the idea here? Yeah. by contradiction and has some aesthetic value but well for one thing you're taking a bit of a detour away from the way things are usually done in the literature which is good in some ways and bad in others uh, and moreover it's my opinion that at least for these kinds of theorems and the basic stuff about topological spaces and metric spaces uh, the proof by contradiction actually captures the intuition in a, in a better way than if I was going to try to avoid it. So suppose, given epsilon, having said that, I appreciate that maybe you're less familiar with proofs by contradiction. This will be a process of acclimatization. So, uh, you'll get used to it. so suppose that we have an epsilon for which there is no such cover. Well, what are we aiming to do? Well, we're aiming to use the sequential compactness, right? So I'm going to get a sequence somewhere. Okay. So suppose that I have fixed epsilon and no such cover exists. <laughs> start trying to produce a sequence to try and get to a contradiction. So choose some x1 in x. I mean, if x is empty, <laughs> yeah, okay, I guess that's a bit of a problem. But I'm claiming there are points. This is the usual cheat to get around the empty space, right? So, if x is empty, then we'll just, I mean, the empty cover is a cover, and that's the n equals zero case. Okay, so if x is not empty, well, choose some point. Well, the open ball of radius epsilon around that point isn't the whole space, because if it was, then I'd have a finite open cover of the form I just supposed did not exist. 
So I know that there must be some point x2 which is in the top. equals the union of those first two walls and because I'm assuring that you know, that isn't the case. So, so choose <coughs> x3 which lies in x but does not lie in either of those two walls that are produced so far. You see now where this is going. This way we construct the sequence. It's one, it's two, it's three, top. Well, such that, well, what am I really doing? So such that x n plus one say is not in the open ball associated to x i for any i less than n. But phrased in terms of distances, what is that saying? It's saying the distance between x n plus one xi, uh, I said less than, strictly less than it, I'll scratch that. So. <laughs> yeah, the effect of that, fix an m, I mean, choose whichever one is large, and think about that one, it's symmetric. And then, since the other one is strictly less than that one, it must have occurred earlier in the construction. And then by the way I chose the larger one, say it was Xn, it would be the case that Xn is not in the open ball of radius epsilon around Xn, say if n was less than n, and therefore this distance and equality must hold. Exercise. <laughs> this is just a fact. You'll be familiar with the sequences in R, so I've left it as an exercise in the notes. I need to use it now. So we'll discuss Cauchy sequences in more detail when we get to talk about completions. Um, recall. Cauchy sequence, you just took the definition and literally generalized the geometric space, would say the following. So it would say a sequence is Cauchy if uh, given epsilon greater than zero, there exists an integer n such that for all n greater than n, the distance between a n. space with this condition that every, I mean, every pair of points in my sequence have distance bounded below uh, by epsilon. But x is sequentially compact, so there is a subsequence of that sequence that I just constructed. Let's say x since the sequence is convergent, it's Cauchy. Epsilon, this is the epsilon I was given in the beginning. Right? So I was given an epsilon, 
that I constructed this special sequence with respect to epsilon. Now I've got this convergent sequence, and I apply the notion of Cauchy to that particular epsilon, and I conclude uh, this. Well, that's a contradiction, right? Because I constructed the sequence with respect to this epsilon so that that could never happen, because those distances were always greater than me. <coughs> shows, or what does it show? It shows that that construction that I was running couldn't actually continue forever. Right? So it must have stopped at some final stage. Uh, that is such a cover must, must have Doesn't solve that problem. What does it mean? It means that there's some y 
where the ball of ready to swarm hand around the wire is not contained in any other one. Maybe there's many such points. There's at least one, two points that are called the Y associated with the integer n. So is this the Y n such that V 1 over n down to Y n is not contained in new Y for any Y? Right? So it somehow just escapes all the elements of my work. Yes. But by hypothesis, any sequence contains a convergent subsequence. Say y and t. The t's are now varying, and as I take t to infinity, let's suppose the sequence converges. Some point in line. Well, it's a, what we started with is a cover. So that limit point lies in some UI. And by definition of the topology, it's in UI that sum all around Y is contained in Y. It's an epsilon. Okay. So what I'm going to do is try and make the YNs, the YNTs, very close to Y and try to induce some sort of contradiction. So, Two is the trick of this. Okay, so the y and t is approach to y. So there exists an integer n such that for all n, sorry, for all t, very than or equal to n. Uh, the distance between y and t and y is less than epsilon. Okay, the epsilon was produced earlier, right? Because I just said, well, look at y, that lies in some open set, then take a ball around the y, which is contained in that open set. Now, using that epsilon, I can look at a convergent sequence and say, well, I can go far enough, and the distance between the elements of the sequence and that vertical really must be less than half that epsilon I just now. Okay, the Gautank T is sufficiently large. So large, I mean, the NTs are strictly increasing as T increases, and so I can make NT as large as I like by making T large. So I can choose NT, T sufficiently large, such that 1 over NT is less than that epsilon. And then I get the following. And then NZX, uh, if the distance between Z and Y and T. Less than one over T. Well, maybe I should say what I'm trying to do because I think it's easy to cross all this. So, what I'm going to get down to is this. That's that's the thing I've constructed. Right? I chose the y and t's, the y n's rather, such that for any n this is not true. These guys are always escaping the open cover. Now, y is the sum of open cover, so I'm not going to get a contradiction by just looking around y and knowing the y and t's have to get it close. And since they have to get it close, one of those balls must be very close to, it must be sort of around y, and therefore any y, that's a contradiction. So, what I'm trying to argue for is that. 
This is contained in all the various sessions on the apply, and that's contained in UI. I was in that session, right? It's just the set of the other cover I found, which contained the limit. Now, that's a contradiction because of the construction of the Y and T. So that's where I'm going, and there's a set of quality business in the middle. So, what I'm doing is I'm saying, okay, take the Z in here. That is, suppose the distance between Z and Y and T, T is anything I like at the moment, is less than 1 half to NT. And I want to show that this is the case. So, I want to look at Z and find that this is less than NT. And that's the proof is constructed in that way, right? It's reverse engineered. So, if I want the distance between Z and Y to be less than epsilon, when I use the triangle of equality to split that up into these two pieces, that's true for any T. And if I take T sufficiently large, then both that and that are true, so that this term here is less than 1 over T. Uh, and that term is less than epsilon 2. Uh, I chose T sufficiently large, so that that is less than epsilon 2. Okay. So that ranges in this inclusion. So like this. Uh, this is the ranger. Construction. There can't be a single index n, let alone nt, such that this guy is containing any ui, but I've constructed in sufficiently large t to so produce such integers nt. That's impossible. So, and I must contradict the original hypothesis that there was no such delta. So that's the proof of the claims. So that's the proof of the theorem that I'm going. Really the open cover we were looking for, right? Because x is 
and by the lemma equal to the union of all those open balls. But each one of those open balls is contained in the UIs. So I get X contained in the union of that finite list of things in color, and the reverse conclusion is of course true, so that is the desired finite sum. 